Good morning, everyone. How's it going today? Waking up in the truck, getting going. We're in uh, a town called Tisdale. I believe that's what it's called, Tisdale, Saskatchewan. Got about an hour and a half drive north now to where I have to unload, and then I have about eight, nine hour drive home. There's supposed to be a blizzard rolling in today, so it may take a little longer than that. I hope that we don't get slowed down too much. So I'd like to make it home tonight yet. I'm gonna be back at work tomorrow. So I'd like to make sure that uh, I can at least have a few hours or an evening at home today yet. But we'll see. We'll see, the time is 7 a.m. I've got two hours to get to where I need to be. So I'll see you when we get there. Tisdale looks like a nice little town here. The northern communities in Saskatchewan and especially in Alberta always sort of surprise me because in Manitoba there's not very much up north. Like you north, you know, I go to Arburg a lot. North of that, there's not too many people. Not very many big towns or anything. But in Saskatchewan and Alberta, they have a lot more population further north than we do. Most of Manitoba's population is right in the south, right next to the U.S. border. You know, trying to get as much warmth off our nice neighbors as we can. British Columbia also has quite a bit of uh, settlements up north as well. Oh, there's a stop sign here. They should have like a flashing light on that or something. People are going to miss that. Nice little Saskatchewan town. I've missed coming out here. It's nice to see it again every now and then. Hopefully the weather's not going to get too bad for me today. I'm a little worried about it, but we'll take care of it. We'll handle it, whatever it is. But I just, I just don't want to be delayed too much. I'd really like to get home at a decent time. But this is trucking, right? It's trucking, so you can't count on anything, really. You can count on plans to not go as planned. Looks like I'm last in line. They're unloading the first guy over there somewhere. Unloading this guy next. And then I'm the third and the last. I was here early too. I wanted to be first. Got here early, it's just the other guys got here earlier. I guess they wanted to be unloaded first more. They told us to be here nine in the morning, so I got here at like quarter to nine. I'm like, ah oh, yeah, that'll be early. That'll be early enough. No, no, I don't know when these guys got here. Because we were told not to sleep up here at the site. We were told to sleep in town, uh, in Nipplewin. I slept down in Tisdale, so I started a bit earlier. Uh, I thought I'd be here. Oh, well, not a big deal. Not a big deal. These guys won't take too long to be unloaded. And mine's only going to take five minutes. Once I get my straps off, I got three crates. Dunk, 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 just like that. With those sounds. And it'll be all off on the ground, and I'll have an empty trailer, and I'll be headed back home. I just don't know how long these guys are going to take. This guy shouldn't be too long. He's got about one, two, three, four pieces, I think. Yeah, we'll be all right. It won't be too long, I'm sure. I'm hoping to miss that blizzard that's supposed to hit Manitoba tonight. I'll probably be driving into it later this evening. Hopefully we make it home. I mean, we will make it home. Just hopefully we uh, make it home tonight. But... You know, if it gets too bad out there, 
it is what it is. You gotta keep safety in mind, slow her down. I'm gonna be empty, I'm gonna have an empty flatbed behind me. I'm not gonna have as much traction as if I was fully loaded, so I'm gonna have to keep that in mind. And it'll be fine. Okay. Nothing we haven't done before, and we'll just be careful. I've gotta remind myself sometimes when I talk like that, that I'm, you know, I'm confident in my ability to drive this truck in all weather conditions. Uh, I've seen it all pretty much. I've been through pretty much anything you can put me through on the road. I'm sure there's always something new to go through that I haven't. Uh, but don't mistake my confidence for uh, ego or arrogance. Uh, I don't want to come off like that. I've been accused of that in my comments section more than once, that I've just got this big massive ego, that like I can do anything. No, no, I'll, I'll be the first to admit, uh, that I'm always learning. I'm just confident in my ability to safely maneuver this truck and get it to point from point A to point B in a safe manner and get there safely. I have a, a million miles behind me here, a million safe miles, so I have that to back up my confidence. But I also want to make sure that I humble myself and remind you and myself that there's always something new I can learn. There's always new experiences that can teach me new things. So don't... Uh, just, just don't confuse my, my confidence for anything other than that. Uh, it's just experience. And what's, what's the worst that could happen on the way home? It gets so bad that I have to shut down? Well, then I pull it off the road to a safe parking lot, and I shut down for the night and wait out the storm. But there's always things I'm learning every day. And in the trucking industry, as you, as you go through your career... I've been in it, in it now 15 years, and I've been doing this job here for 10 years. Well, now I'm sort of doing all the jobs, city and a little bit of uh, overnights and stuff, but I've been driving out here on the highways for quite a while, and I'm still learning new things all the time. So, never believe anyone when they say, oh, I've been doing this for X amount of years, there's nothing I can learn, I've learned everything, I know everything, There's there's always something to learn especially for me. And I always take tips. If I'm doing something wrong, or if I'm doing something in a way that could be done better or more efficient, I'm always open to advice and tips from guys who've been doing this longer than me. Or even the guys who haven't been, as in, if you catch me doing something that I could be doing more efficiently, always willing to learn. The only time you stop learning when you're trucking is when you think you know it all. When you think that you know everything there is to know. So we're empty and on our way back. Taking a little bit of a different route this time though. Or root, or however you say. I never know how to pronounce those words. I think root is the Queen's English. I think that's the way, the proper way to say it. I mean, you would think that she would speak the correct English, right? Seeing as she is the English monarch from England. Oh well, not important. Just figured I'd show you this We're going through a little bit of a scenic area of Saskatchewan here. Eastern Saskatchewan, between Highway 3 and Highway 5. We're on Highway 38. If you can follow all of that, good for you. It's a beautiful area that we're going through. We've got a big lake off to our right. And all of the hoarfrost on the trees today making everything just look beautiful. Hoar frost is uh, when the frost builds up on the branches of the trees like that. Usually from fog the night before, it was pretty foggy here last night. It makes all the tre trees look all uh, sparkling and white. I've got about seven hours of driving to get home yet, or get back to our yard. Then I've got to empty out this truck Make sure it's as clean, if not cleaner, than when I got into it, and then head home. I love this country, though. Just being able to be out here and see it. Like Canada is a beautiful place to be.
So the blizzard did end up showing up, but lucky for us, it's just the beginning of it, I think. The roads aren't slippery at all. It's just blowing snow over the road. Now that we're getting into Headingley, it's uh, slowing down, calming down quite a bit here too. Sort of sheltered by all the buildings and stuff. I'm gonna grab some fuel at the Flying J. Uh, so the next driver after me doesn't have to go fuel it up right away. I like to leave the truck full of fuel. I found it full of fuel, so I'm gonna leave it full of fuel and DEF. This truck was a real treat to drive. Like definitely my favorite you call this a condo style truck I mean I already knew that Penworth was my favorite but this is my first trip in a t680 Wow like it is a beautiful truck it's just a behemoth it's just a huge there's so much space in here you have a, you have a party in here my phone's even going nuts got parked right in the lane? What's going on? Someone... I hope he didn't break down right there. Be a nasty spot to break down. You're right across the street from the truck stop there though. My dad just pulled into the truck. Oh boy, maybe his engine died. But yeah, this T680, I tell you, this is a truck of dreams. Truck of dreams. Smoothest, biggest, most spacious, roomy truck I've ever been in. The definition of highway luxury. And the saddest part of the day and of the whole trip, saying goodbye to this beautiful girl. It's behemoth, this is a huge truck. <laughs> it's just massive. And you sit so high off the ground, like compared to, I guess it's about the same as that one. That's a Peterbilt right there. I mean, they're both nice trucks, but wow, this Kenworth takes it up to the next level. This T680, I tell you what, if they ever rope me back onto the road full time, I am going to get on my knees and beg to be in a T680. <laughs> Man, this would be comfortable to live in. So hey, if you guys want to work here, if you guys want to drive here, this might be the truck you get assigned to if you're coming on to the dark hole side of things. I mean, it's a really nice truck. Truck or Josh approved. I am blown away. Nicest truck I've ever driven. Aside from like the classic long nose W9 and you know, the long nose Pete, those, I'm not counting those because those are obviously are uh, trucks in themselves in a category of their own. But this for comfort, luxury, quality man I had a really really good time if they ever need me to do another overnight and uh, they assign this truck to me man I won't hesitate <laughs> I have made myself available for these so whenever they're in a pinch or whenever they need someone or maybe they just want to throw me a bone every now and then and let me go out overnight or maybe for a couple of nights maybe further sometimes but uh, they know I need to stay closer to home but I am definitely not gonna fight them if they want me to go and stay on the road overnight or you know take the odd long trip out there too down south I, I don't mind at all this is what I live for this is this is the reason I live trucking all kinds of it but I like the city stuff too I love that Pete that I drive old school Pete love that I, I just like it all I don't know I'm a happy guy. This it doesn't take too much to please me. Just give me a truck that runs. Give me a load to pull and I'm gone. Happy as can be. And then, on top of this, I get to go home to my awesome wife now. And all of our dogs. And our nice little home. That's awesome. Okay, on, on that note, I'm going to get everything packed up here. I've sort of already got it all. Uh, in a bit of chaos over here. I'm going to bring it to the passenger door. I'm going to bring my pickup up beside us there. Then I've got to remember to move my straps out of this truck, put it back in the Peterbilt that I'm going to be driving. Okay. I'll see you later, everybody. If I don't talk to you again tonight, have a good one. Thanks for tagging along with me and keeping me company on this trip to Saskatchewan. I hope you tune in again. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you here. Make videos pretty much every day, most days. 
always something going on. If you love trucking, then you belong here too. I'll talk to you later.